I work in southern Iraq, and I'll go through that here in a little bit. And, uh, and we have a team of electrical engineers over there. There's about four of us, and we have solely worked with ETAP to develop an electrical model of the Ramaya oil field. I want to really show you kind of some of the drawbacks and problems that we faced as we were going through Ramaya. So I'm going to start out with just some general Iraq information, just so you kind of know where I am when I go over there. As you can see, Iraq has a lot of oil fields. Let me see if I can get this to work. The little These uh, green, dark green, and light green are all oil and gas domes. So Iraq is full of oil, all right? Many city, most of the cities in northern Iraq is what is really where most of the problems are right now. I work in southern Iraq, which is Basra, which is down here. I thought y'all were going to have a copy of the presentation so you could kind of flip back to this as we were going through, and I thought this was going to be more interactive, so sorry about this. But these are some of the acronyms that I will have in the future of the presentation, okay? Uh, a couple of key ones, you know, I, I work for British Petroleum, uh, contracted to them via Worley Parsons. Ramaya is owned by BP and CNPC, which is the Chinese National Petroleum Company, and then I also worked with the U.S. Department of Energy via KBR right after the war. So I've been over there probably eight out of the last 12 years. Okay, the Ramaya oil field. Again, it's in southern Iraq, near Basra, the second largest city in Iraq. It's the largest oil field in Iraq, third largest oil field in the world. 95% of the gross domestic product of Iraq is oil. Current production is 1.4 million barrels a day, so even at $50 a barrel, that's a lot of money a day. Uh, one of the main projects we're working on is water injection, okay? So we're injecting water to replace the oil to keep the pressure of the dome up. We're doing water flood. We're not doing fracking or any of that yet. We're just doing flooding. And in 2012, Rue purchased ETAP to develop the Ramaya oil field electrical model. Just to give you a little history, several wars, I don't know if you could see in the picture, I, it was one of my better damaged pictures, but there is no connections. They had actually flipped over some transformers, disconnected transmission lines. Uh, many, many things. This is a, one of the pump houses we went to. There is no roof, uh, no protection for motors. Um, and then after the second Gulf War, we did do a lot of refurbishments with the U.S. Department of Energy. Parsons Iraq Joint Venture was one of the main companies I worked for. And this is one of our finished products. What did this mean to Ramalia? Limited reinvestment. They didn't have m much new equipment or materials. If you can tell from this transformer, it's actually leaking insulation fluid. <laughs> on, so it is, and it's still operating. We, the Iraqi engineers did not have very many engineering tools, very little references, no standards hardly any testing equipment. So in that, that bottom picture is actually one of those transformers did fail and what they had was mobile substations that they would just roll up next to the existing substation and actually just drop wires down. That, that's still true in most of the locations in Ramalia. I just I, I, this is pretty interesting. It's, this is a simple oil and gas upstream overview. That was an ESP well. So it actually had power cable going down into it. An ESP is the electrical submersible pump that pulls oil out of the ground. Those are wet crude treatment plant. 
So this is the process that we see in Iraq. It's a very simple process, but it's handling a lot of fluid and a lot of gas. Uh, the sales gas for the generators is your natural gas, basically. The propane and butane is what the local people use to cook their food. And as you, as, as you can see here, the water injection to the side is the water flood. That's the major electrical users. And they're all motors. All motors is what I was worried about. Rue owns several, has several facilities, the degassing stations, the wet crude treatment plants mainly, uh, also the pipelines, the CPSs, and then the water treatment plant, which actually takes water from the Tigris and Euphrates River and actually brings water about 80 kilometers up to the different CPSs. So if you look here, this is actually a map showing Karmad Ali and then the pipelines to all the different users. The key thing I wanted you to know from this is that all these facilities are connected electrically. So even though there's different companies involved, they're all connected electrically. So I'm very interested with Ali later to talk about clouding and how we can share information from the different facilities. But that is one of my hopes for the ETAP model. I know you can't read this, but just this kind of gives you a breadth of what we've been working on. So it's taking us a long time to develop this. And this is how I showed or presented the ETAP model to different users like yourself. This is how I would actually show it. Let me see if I can highlight something. So each of the facilities has a composite network. Those composite networks do feed from other composite networks. And so all these lines connecting outside the box are actually shown in the ETAP model. I'm sure as y'all have used ETAP, you kind of get lost if you have several composite networks, what's connected to what. And so this is how I handled that problem. In general for Iraq, the whole electrical system, it's 400 kV throughout Iraq, 132 kV, to the different transmission. And then, as was discussed earlier, the distribution is 6.6 .6 kV, 11 kV, and 400 volt within the field. Several different types of equipment since it was built and started in the 1950s. Many different types of equipment we have to look at. Um, and very difficult to coordinate between the two, the different types of equipment. We don't have, they're all IEC based, there's no, no ANSI equipment. Is it going? Yeah. And we have, going along with that equipment, this is some very old equipment that is still in service. It's old 11 kV oil filled switch gear. We do have some vacuum, newer equipment that was bought with Project Rio. And then we have some retrofit kits, this SF6 breakers and S ABB retrofit kit. All different types of relays, electromechanical relays. Then we actually have the solid state relays, the REF543 type relays. We were talking about responsibilities earlier, I think Ali mentioned, you know, different voltage levels. Our RU responsibility is 33 kV up to 33 kV. MOE is 66 kV and above. This picture is, see if I can, this is a, a mimic board of a 132 kV AIS substation. And they had actually taken out all the relays in the back of this equipment and replaced them with uh, MICOM relays. And this is the central substation for all of Romalia. Very important substation. Oh, did I? Yeah, it went too fast there. But medium voltage motors. We have several medium voltage motors. These are the big ones, four megawatts each. 
We have 40 of those. We have induction motors, about 50 medium voltage size, ranging from about 2 megawatts to about 8 megawatts. Operating load is between 50 and 100 megawatts of the field, but this is going to be going up dramatically to the gigawatt level. We're probably going to be needing about 1,000 megawatts in probably the next three or four years if all the enhancements from the different companies continue. Hence, one of the reasons I'm trying to look at ETAP to help understand the electrical system as this generation and demand increases. Why did I choose ETAP? Or what was ETAP mainly used for? Is the ease of the copy and paste information, TK's presentation with 14 is, would have really helped. <laughs> Most of the time I was spent rearranging single lines, composite networks. It would have been nice to have an automatic feature for that. Uh, and also, the MOE does use the PSSE software. I'm hoping to actually synchronize with that and actually share information between the MOE and group. How was this information or model developed? There was no existing documentation. We went to many of the sites. They didn't have drawings. They didn't have schematics. They didn't have anything. This is the drawings I'm showing you are basically PowerPoint presentations developed by both the US military and some of the Iraqi engineers with word art or whatever they had available. That's kind of where we started. So, and then protection relay settings, they did not have time current coordination curves. They did not have anything they could really give us, so we actually downloaded everything from the relays or actually looked at the electromechanical relays and looked at the settings themselves to make the model. This kind of shows you some little details about the electrical model. The SOC facilities, the MOE facilities. And these are some of the air insulated switch yards that we have seen that we have up throughout the facilities. You'll see a couple of gas turbine generators there. So again, the ETAP model started with nothing, you know, blank sheet of paper, OLV1. Now we have, you know, 210 plus composite networks, 1700 plus buses, 1900 plus medium and high voltage electrical relays, 400 plus two winding transformers. The low voltage is going to increase greatly as the model is developed. Uh, and then we have about 100, right now, 180 time current coordination curves. The main uses, I mean, as a user group meeting, the main uses we used it for is as built electrical connections. We were just trying to figure out what's connected to what, where were any limitations in those connections, where were cables undersized, where was equipment undersized, where were things that we really needed to fix. And so, as that picture is actually one of the duct banks that we had to design for over, we had some several cable installations where we had four cables per phase, 12 cables per circuit, two circuits. So we had to do several trench installations like that. The future, what, what do I hope the future entails for the ETAP model for RU? Uh, especially with 14 and using this information between companies, between facilities, Shell, ExxonMobil, uh, Luke Oil, ENI are all oil companies within very near RU. We all use the same electrical power from the same electrical power grid, it's the same power grid that's used for the people also. So there's just a lot of expansion going on and a lot of thought process going on behind that. And I was hoping to use the ETAP model to do that. Uh, this picture up here shows the future power generation of the gas turbine generators in southern Iraq by the MOE, the Ministry of Electricity. Again, it's a users group meeting. I was going to show you one specific example where ETAP was really handy for us. If you look here 
at the map. And maybe I can. Here we go. 132 kV comes over in over here. It comes to a facility, and then there's the main pumps. If you can kind of see my cursor. So when we arrived in 2011, power came in through the mobile substation. The new AIS substation wasn't even used. And uh, as you'll see from this, well, we had three different options developed and studied. ETAP was used for the technical calculations and the decision making. The project was decided based on materials, calculations, cost, schedule, and we finished this project in 2013. From a very simplified view, you know, we had a, a brand new MOE AIS substation, and we had some existing equipment left over from the Department of Energy work. The power actually came in through a mobile substation here with underrated electrical equipment. And there's actually a picture of that mobile substation a little closer. So we went through a couple of options. One of the options the Worley Parsons Lon London Group had was put in another mobile substation, but because of the fault levels, they had to have two IS limiters. I don't know if y'all have used these. These are very expensive medium voltage fuses for very high levels. It's about a million dollars each per IS limiter. This was my suggestion was to uh, actually uh, just extend the 132 kV bus out and add another transformer and 132 kV breaker. The problem with this, with this was it was a lot of equipment we had to bring in. That transformer and the, and the breaker, disconnect switch. And we had to deal with the MOE an awful lot on that change. Our final solution was to buy one new IS limiter, and then we were able to use existing equipment and existing cables for the rest of the connections. And we also removed the mobile substation, and so we removed the underrated equipment. 25KA 11KV switchgear was removed out of the system, which was a real problem with the short circuit analysis. Again, why did we use, what did ETAP help with? It, the need for the ABB IS limiter confirmed the underrated 11 kV switch gear. It helped size the cables correctly on those 6.6 uh, .6 kV cable connections. And then it actually helped with the interconnect control wiring in between the 11 kV switch gear and the 6.6 .6 kV switch gear. We had a lot of that. And this is just a quick view of the ETAP model in its state right now. So I had two composite networks showing the different connections. As, as you can see, the connections, let me see if I can get this working. Right here, these are, these are feeders to transmission lines to other facilities. That's how I showed the different composite networks. And then I named them sheets. And then you can actually follow the sheets to what each sheet is connected to. And then a little bit about myself. So 